Welcome back, BBC Kids. We are so excited that you came back to see our missionary story for today. We are going to continue the life of Hudson. Hudson Taylor. We are going to have a great adventure today. So, do you guys remember? I want to start by asking you guys a couple questions. Number one, do you guys remember why Hudson Taylor could not be, be a missionary? Do you remember what, what was his problem as a kid? That's right. He was a sickly young man. That's right, he was. He was very sick. Second, do you guys remember what did he do when he got saved? Do you guys remember what he did? Oh, yeah? Remember? That's right, you remember. He was sharing the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ with everyone. That's right, and the same thing can you do. You could do as well. Number three, what can you and I do to share the gospel? You got it? Yeah. Yes. We could pass out tracts, absolutely. Yes, we could tell our friends about Jesus Christ. Yes, we could do all these things and share God's good news to anybody. Number four, what did Hudson Taylor do to get ready to go to China? Do you remember? I know you remember this one. This was a little bit harder. But remember, he learned Greek and Hebrew. And he learned, he started learning Chinese. And, and not only that, but he also started to learn medicine. That's right. Medicine with, do you guys remember the doctor's name? Dr. Hardy. Dr. Hardy is correct. So, that's what he that's what he got to do last time. And remember when at the end of the story there came a man and they held up Hudson Taylor by the neck and told him, What do you how do you want our what do you want with us? And was being mean about it. And grabbed him by the collar and lifted him up. And you know what that other man did? He went, he went with his fist and he rubbed up his fist and all of a sudden he heard beep and it was time. Yeah, it was time to get his lunch. So he just, he said, ah, Hudson Taylor, you're not worth a minute of my time. So you know what he did? He left Hudson Taylor, he left him alone and he went on his own. He went to doing what he wanted to do. Hudson Taylor was going to begin to learn to do without. Learn to do without. He was going to learn a tremendous lesson about doing without. And the first thing, now that he's at Dr. Harvey's house, uh, there came a problem. Because he was in one of the little red rooms, some family members came and, well, Hudson thought it would be time. Hudson Taylor thought, let me leave and I will find myself a little room to rent. And you know what? He was used to living in a nice big house, but he chose, said, I'm gonna live without so much. And he went into the poor part of the town and he rented a little room. And in that, in that poor part of town, he rented a small room and his rent was very minimum and he ate exactly what everybody else that was poor was eating. And you know what? He was learning that less money I spend on me, more money I could spend on others. Wow, what a tremendous lesson. I think God was starting to begin to uh, teach him a tremendous lesson that we find in Luke chapter six. Luke chapter 6 and verse 38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, 
press down and shake it together and run it over shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. He thought and he wanted to be able to give more. He wanted to be able to be able to share more. So he started that. But you know what? The Lord was preparing him for something even bigger. He needed to learn to share and to to do without and to do without and he met this young lady he met mrs oop wrong way i'm going the wrong way let me go back the right way he met mrs vaughn oh let me tell you about mrs vaughn Miss Vaughn was a beautiful young lady and she could play the piano and oh, she had a beautiful voice and she sung so beautiful. And while well, Hudson Taylor just fell in love with this young lady and he wanted to marry her, he said, you know what, it's time. It's time for, for me to marry this young lady so he went and spoke to her parents and he told her told her well will you marry me and you know what she said she said yes but you gotta talk to my parents so he went to talk to his parents and he's talking to his parents he said hudson taylor we would allow you to marry our daughter but can't go to China. And Hudson Taylor was like, go to China or get married? And, and he had to learn to do without. And days passed by and he said, no, God would want me to, God would want me to be a missionary to China. So he came back and told Mrs. Vaughn, she said, I'm sorry, I can't marry you. I must go to China. And so he was just heartbroken, but the Lord was, was teaching him to do without, without money, without the commodities, without a lot of food, but God was going to do something incredible. And through this, God was teaching him also how to learn to trust in him. And Dr. Hardy was a great doctor, but he would forget to pay Hudson Taylor. He would forget to pay him once in a while. And so Hudson Taylor made a decision that he was going to ask God and God alone for the things. So he was, he was, he was one day, Hudson Taylor, one evening, he had gotten home. And he's, as, as he got home, he heard, he heard on the door, a long bang. And, and a, yeah, a man was screaming, help, help, Hudson, help, help. I need you to help me. They all barely fit. 
And these these kids were, I mean, they were skinny and they were scrawny and you could just tell they were malnourished. They had not eaten much. And Hudson saw all of that. And he prayed for this woman and he begged God to help her and save her and, and, and just keep her um, close to, to him and that she would not have to die. And as he was praying, a verse came into his heart. It says, how can you give? How can you not give? Came to his heart. And he had in his pocket half a crown. That's all the money he had to eat for the next week. And he said, how could I have this money in my pocket? And they're dying. And she said, no, you know what? I'm, I'm going to do something. I'm going to give them my money. And so... He pulled out the money and he gave it to the man. And the man was so thankful. He went and bought some, some food and came back and they ate and, and, and made, made the, the wife a little broth so that she could drink. And, and you know what? This young lady got better. And this man was so happy. And Hudson Taylor went home and he went home in that night and he was praying and saying, God, you know, I have no more money. I have nothing to eat in my home. And the doctor always forgets to pay me. Please, Lord, provide for me. And so he went to work yesterday and the following day and he was at work and in the evening he came home and this, the place that he lived said, hey, you got mail. You got something in the mail for you. And he, he grabbed it and he looked at it and he put it to the side. And he went to his room and he said, Lord, I really need you to help me get some food. And, and I'm hungry and, 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 and please help me. Well, guess what was inside the envelope? You won't believe what was inside the envelope. I know it. I know. I know it. I know it that you're not going to believe this. But you know what was inside the envelope? Yep. You guessed it completely right. There was a glove in the envelope and a letter in the envelope. But there was something else. Yes, I know. You are you are the smartest kid in town. I know that you are. You knew there was some money in there. And you see, God gave him not only a half a crown, but he gave him half a sovereign, which was four times as much as he gave to that family the last, the last week. You know why? Because God is good like that. God provides to his children way more than they could ever imagine. But he had to trust in God that God would provide. And, and the father, weeks went, went by and that money just lasted him for a while. And the doctor kept on forgetting and kept on forgetting and kept on forgetting until one day, the doctor comes to Hudson and says, Hudson, today is the day that I pay you, right? And Hudson's like, yeah. And, he, and Hudson's like, yes, I need the money. I need, I need to pay the rent, but I'm not going to ask. Lord, you got to provide. And as the doctor, doctor was, Dr. Hardy was telling him, Hudson had a smile and said, oh, I know he's going to pay me. But you know what? The doctor said, oh, Hudson, I sent all the money to the bank. And now I don't have any money. And Hudson's like, well, Lord, you're going to have to provide somewhere else. 
There has to be another way that you got to provide. And you know what? He started to pray throughout the day. And, you know, at the end of the day, Dr. Hardy calls Hudson and says, Hudson, can you please come over here? And Dr. H uh, doc uh, Dr. Hardy says, you know, Hudson, I don't know. But one of the richest men in town, one of my richest patients, he said that he was praying and, and the Lord put in his heart to come and pay me. And he pulls out the money and gives it to him and pays him. And he just continues to learn that he's going to trust God. And God was just working and working in his life. And it came to a point that he wasn't learning anything more from, from Dr. Harvey. So he decided that he needed to go to college. So he went to college in London. And there in London, he would, he would be helping and he would be doing all these great things for, uh, for the school and, and learning. And one day... a patient came into the hospital and he was sorely ill and Hudson Taylor was taking care of him and 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 watching over him and and, and trying to cure him and, but that patient just didn't make it the patient died but not only did the patient die but whatever had whatever that patient had, he gave it to Hudson Taylor. And Hudson Taylor there began to feel sick in the coming days. And he talked to the doctor. And the doctor told him, Hudson, you need to go home, Hudson. You're dying. You are going to die, Hudson. You need to make sure that you go and speak to your parents and let them know. And you know what? Hudson was really sad. But he turned around and told the doctor, Doctor, I'm not going to die. God's not done with me. I need to go to China. I need to serve God. And the doctor says, I'm sorry, but what you have is terrible. There's no cure for it. And Hudson said, well, I, at least I know this. If I die, I know for sure that I'm going to heaven. How about you? Do you know where you're going to spend eternity? The Bible says that we can know for sure that if we die today, we could be going to heaven. So Hudson Taylor went to his room to see what he was doing. And there in his room, he just kept up. He, he got a huge amount of fever and was getting sick. Oh, young people, I know we are living in days that are difficult. And I know that we are living in days where a coronavirus is a reality around us. But I also know this. I know this that God is greater than any coronavirus. I also know this, if, if it is that we get it, I know this, God is good to allow us to go through it and not only go through it, but survive. But if we don't, I know this, I know that we could spend eternity in heaven. So you know what happened to Hudson Taylor? You know what happened after he got this disease that he got really, really sick from? You're right. He did. Well, you're going to have to come back next week. Oh, no, just kidding. No, he got better. He got better from, from that. And after he got better, then you know what happened after he got better? He's, he started 
seeing that it was time. It was time for him to go to China. So he got, he got himself ready. He got all of his books and he got the stuff that he thinks he needed. And he went to the missionary society. And in the missionary society, he had prepared himself and he went over and, and talked to the director. And the director that day was writing a letter to Hudson Taylor to let him know that it was time. As he was writing that letter, Hudson Taylor comes in and says, it's time. And the director says, yes, it's time. And you know what? It was time for him to go to, to China. And in China, yes, in China, he learned he, was good, he had to get to China. And he had to get to China quickly. So he went to the docks and said, I need to get to China. I need to go to China. I need to become a missionary in China. And you know what? He's like, okay, let's do this. Let's go. And as he was going to China and he was on his way, he got onto the ship and he, he left England the 21st of September. I'm sorry. At the age of 21, he left England, September 19, 1853. And he sailed to England, to China. As he was sailing to China, he came across a big problem. He came across a, a huge problem. Uh, he went on this boat and there's a the first week he was in this boat, there was a huge storm and waves were crashing in and, and the boat was just rocking back and forth and the men on the ship were just thinking that they would be okay. And they were. They got better. And things got better on this ship. But you know what? One day, the ship just wasn't moving at all. There was absolutely no wind. The sails were still. But there was a current moving the, sh the ship. And the men were scrambling to figure out what's going on. How are we going to fix this? What's going on? What, are, what is going on? What, uh, and they were just scrambling. And, the, and the, the captain of the ship said, Okay, don't panic. Don't panic. Everything will be okay. We will. We will be okay. But the, the ship kept on going. And there was these rocks on the side. And the captain said, we have done all that we can. Hold on and see if we can survive this. And as he said that, Hudson Taylor said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know, I know, I know. We have not done all that we can do. There's one more thing to do. Do you know what that one thing is that they needed to do? Will they crash? Well, you got to come back tomorrow to see if they will crash or not. Till next time, don't miss out on this wonderful missionary story. May the Lord bless you and we'll see you soon again.